just want to take a quick look at um, adding a mover in Unreal 3. And just a quick simple way to do it is um, with a, a trigger volume. And I'll show you what we're talking about here if I can preview this level here. All right, so I have a trigger volume right here on this static mesh. And if you walk within the volume in matinee, it's just going to open this door here. This is for basically a little Java game uh, tutorial or demo as we're going to call Pirate Arena. And then there's another trigger volume here. And once you approach it, it opens the door. There's different ways to do triggers and there's different ways to do movers. Um, you can play with karma and different physics and kismet, but we're just going to look at doing a kind of a very simple mover. So, um, you know, we don't have anything um, like that over here, but we're, we're going to do the same thing and just set up a simple mover and a door there. Try to go through all the steps. All right, so I'm just going to position myself around here. Um, as sort of a, you know, a preview. And in our top down view here, let me just kind of scroll over. So let's go and open the generic browser. And you notice you can select different categories. In this case, what I want to get are some static meshes. All right, and so here's some different static meshes I can choose from. I just brought in the defaults here. Um, I won't use anything special, so that way you'll have, you know, this is something you would be guaranteed to have on your default Unreal 3 installation. And this isn't really meant for, you know, uh, use on this level, but I'll just use this and I'll kind of resize it a little bit to go in that. Just kind of, you know, something to frame the door with. So this is just a normal mesh, and I'm just going to right click with it selected in the generic browser and add a static mesh. All right, and let me zoom out and zoom in over here. And I'm going to hold down Control and Left and just want to rotate it. All right, and let me move this over here and move it over there some. Zoom in, and now I'm just going to change my uh, widget over here to the scaling widget. Let me actually use a non-uniform scaling widget. And make that a little bit larger and then go back still just a little bit larger there kind of thick there but we'll move it back all right and There, it's kind of hidden, so it just kind of looks like a recessed door frame or something. There, all right. So that's just a normal mesh. Now, the next thing I want to do is select my door, or what I'm going to use for the in the mover, and we're going to add that as an interp actor. And I'm going to choose this one here. And I'm going to right click once it's selected in the generic browser. And this time I'm going to say add interp actor. See where it says add interp actor there. So it's not a normal, uh, you know, not like you're adding a normal static mesh. Again, control and hold down the uh, right mouse there so I can uh, just do a little rotation and line this up. And let me pull this out of here. And with it selected, again, I just want to do um, go here and change the widget. And I'm just going to. Pull it out and stretch it to fill that whole little bit of a section there. All right, and with the interp actor uh, static mesh added, I'm going to double click on it to bring up its property sheet. And you'll see this, and what you want to do is set up you know, the karma physics for it. And by default, it'll be set to uh, no collision, which means players could just walk through it. But if you're going to use it as a door, we're going to set it up to block all. So you know that way no actors will go through it unless we open it. I want to set that. And then also under the dynamic SMA actor, won't really show up unless you go into the lighting environment and set the light environment component be enabled. So I'm going to check that option as well. Close it. And now it will actually cast shadows and show up when we build the lighting and everything in, in the level. And so that kind of sets up the you know the meshes, the interp actor mesh and the other normal mesh, which is sort of frames the door. So now the rest of these things we need to do, we need to add a trigger, and we need to add a trigger volume, the brush, 
And then once we do that, we need to set up the physics and kismet and the animation and matinee. So the first thing, you know, the thing I'm going to do, I'm going to add a actor here. I'm going to add a trigger. And I'm just going to pull that up here. And I want to position it sort of in front of. Notice I'm coming up here. I'm just going to kind of move it. It doesn't have to be there. It depends on what you're doing. Here we're just using, we're going to use a trigger volume. So it doesn't really matter where I put it, you know, and as long as it's, you know, close to the object that I intend to, you know, set up in, in Kismet. So, I, you know, I, I can re relate the two together. But I'm just going to put it right there. And to decrease the size of it, uh, let me go here just <clears throat> so we can kind of see what's behind it. I'm just going to set its display property to half what it is. Okay. So. All right. So there's our trigger. It's there. Now I want to set up my volume brush. And to do this, I'm just going to use the Cube Brush Builder tool. I need to zoom out so I can figure out where my brush is. There it is, right there. All right. And let's bring this around here. And over here. And over here. And over here. All right. And here. And I'm going to go here and just change my uh, change my drag grid a little bit so I can you know, line that up with that little panel on the wall. I'm trying to make that like the little push button for the door. All right, and then I'm I'm just going to right click on the Builder Brush tool and let's see 256. I'll leave that on the Z and the X. Let me try 128 on the Y. And uh, let's do. Let's see, play with this a little bit. All right. And then maybe 200 there. Just trying to figure out, you know, the, the proximity of where I want to fire off the trigger to open the door. It's about right there, what I want. All right, so using the brush there. And then once I have that set up, there's a couple of ways I can do this. I can go here to brush, add volume, and I can choose a trigger volume. And there's also a little shortcut, you know, button or whatever. You could say add volume. I can right click on it and select it that way. Either way, it doesn't matter, however you want to do it. But All right, so I'm going to move the brush out of the way. Now this one I do, there's that green box there, and that is the trigger volume. So with the trigger volume uh, selected, I want to go ahead and open up Kismet. And I already have some sequences in here. You can, see, you can zoom out. and It's kind of a neat little tool. You can kind of, you know, it's almost like programming with a flowchart. And graphically represent everything but with that selected I can right click and it'll find the current object and what I want is a new event using trigger volume 6 and I want it to be a touch event you know when the character or the player touches it and I'm gonna hold down control and just drag this over here and slide it a little bit okay so that's set up for um, our trigger volume now the next thing I want to do I'm gonna select the the part of the you know uh, the interp actor or you know the, the static mesh that I want to animate in this case so notice I select it here and when I do that in Kismet I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna say new matinee and so that'll you know set up a new matinee sequence that I can you know set a program with keyframes for moving that mesh around in the game and once I do that I'm just gonna double click on the matinee and I'm going to do this, um, you know, typically a lot of doors are two seconds. So you can make quick doors, you know, in half the time, maybe one second or, you know, slower doors um, if you want. But a lot, a lot of times, you know, in Unreal, you'll see like a kind of a two second delay. So I'm just going to use that. And let me go ahead and take this. I'm just going to move it to zero as the starting point or starting position. Let me move this over here. Okay. And when I do that. I'm going to go here. I'm just going to close this little gray area here. I'm going to right click on this gray background. I'm going to add a new empty group. And um, this is for a Java game, actually. Just kind of making a, a level walkthrough for a Java game. So I'm going to call it Pirate Arena, and this is door four. And different arenas. You can call it whatever you want, something meaningful to you and what you want to accomplish with 
Anyway, I want to add a movement track. So once I've added that group, I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to add a, a new movement track. And when I do, let me shrink this down here a little bit so you can uh, pull this up here a little bit so you can see. When I do, you'll notice in matinee, you know, here's the timeline. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. When I do, notice how it changes down here when I hit enter. I'll just move that out a little bit so you can see. And then there's these arrows down here. Okay, and so I'm going to grab that. And I'm going to move the line all the way to here. And then I'm going to hit enter again. So that's the first keyframe with the static mesh where it is the first time I hit enter. Now I'm going to hit enter again the second time. Notice the second red arrow appears. I'm going to leave matinee open so we can kind of see what's happening and just kind of slide it down along with the generic browser and all the other one crazy windows I have open Kismet. But um, now what I want to do is you know move this you know in wherever I want to move it, whatever place I want to move it to. And so in this case for that keyframe I could just move it here. I want to slide the door you know away so that the player can walk through there. And that being done, let me go ahead and close uh, you know the matinee sequence. And I'm going to hold down control and drag this a little bit. And so what I want to do is I want to say touched and play. I'm just going to you know drag a wire from touch to play. And I'm going to set the max trigger count to zero because I want this to be infinite. You know, otherwise, you know, there'd be a maximum number of times that they could open the door and then they get trapped, which might be what you want if you're building a trap. But um, in this case, I just want to, I want the door to have an infinite number of opening and closing, uh, you know, sequences. All right, so max count zero, our trigger count, and then I want a two-second delay for those two seconds. So I'm going to right-click, uh, and let's see. Let me choose a new action. I'm going to choose miscellaneous and a delay. We'll just add a little delay box. Let me hold down Control and drag this over here. And um, when completed, I'm just going to drag a wire to start for the delay. And when finished, I'm going to drag a wire to reverse. So it'll just start the whole thing over sort of an infinite loop there. Drag this up here so you can see it. And then I just need to set the duration to match what I set up in matinee. There's a two second delay there. All right, and so that's all set up in uh, Kismet. Now at this point I'm gonna back up and I'm gonna rebuild the level. Uh, you know what, before I do that, let me move this. These are just some custom textures things I brought in from uh, Photoshop is target files. But let me move this down some because that door is going to not exactly a great door but you know at least you know that you'll have these things in your default Unreal 3 installation if, if you choose to use them. Alright so let me build the level Okay, level built. And let's test it out. And at this point, you know, it's one way. I mean, I can open the door from the outside, but once I get in, I'm going to be trapped. All right, and then by here, I'm going to touch the trigger. And notice the door opens. I'm going to come back here. So I'm in the A4 corridor. Wait a little two second delay there. You know, once we lift the trigger volume, and then there's nothing to allow me out. You know, and karma's blocking my way out there. Of course, I need to line that up. You can see I haven't lined everything up there. But All right, so how would I set it up so that I could exit? I just want to add another volume, trigger volume, behind the door. And that way the player can exit if they need to. And to do that, I'm just going to use the same brush. Alright, and back up just a hair there. Alright, so the same brush, and again, add a volume, and it's going to be a trigger volume. And let me pull the brush out of the way here. I'll move that over here. Okay, and again, with this highlighted, I'm going to open up Kismet, right click, and new event using trigger volume 7, touch. 
and I'm going to set the max trigger count to zero again so nobody gets trapped in there and then touched I'm just going to connect it to the matinee sequence and delay that I already have set up so two trigger volumes and now with that set up alright so I'm going to run over here touch the first trigger volume door opens go in here to the arena come back out wait for the door to shut and now I'm going to hit the second trigger volume and the door opens again alright and same thing going on here except you know this is these are ones that I've lined up and but I have trigger volumes let it shut there's just another trigger volume behind the door I'm going to wait for it to shut and then when I come up here and once I step into that trigger volume it opens the door okay and this is just um I was working on you know a level that we could build uh in a couple of tutorials using swing and abstract windows toolkit components in Java just using like draw polygon and fill polygon and fill oval so you could like draw a map out and this is just sort of a 3D unreal version of that that I'm going to use for sort of a view okay let me just kind of come out here that's my cat eating cat food my cat's breath smells like cat food <clears throat> and that's just the level there and this, same thing in you know pretty much the same thing in Java using some of the abstract windows toolkit and swing functions um, but this is just kind of a 3d version and, and this will become sort of the player view north south east and west for cardinal directions so that's how to set up a simple mover in unreal 3